Welcome back. We're talking about logistic regression. This is episode something, five or six, I can't remember which, but we are working our way through all of the aspects of logistic regression. And just so that you know, we are looking at a data set um, that you have access to, by the way, if you're working in R, if you install ML Bench as a package, call it with the library, and then you've got this data here. And all of the data we're looking at refers to that. Here's the first 10 lines of the data. We're particularly looking at diabetes as an outcome variable. Uh, diabetes, logistic regression, just in case you don't know, logistic regression has uh, always a binary outcome variable. Yes, no, black, white, male, female, up, down, blah, blah, blah. And we're looking at a number of predictive variables that we're putting into the model now. So I'm not gonna get into it, talking about logistic regression in detail. You need to go back and watch the rest of the, the earlier videos in this series, just so that you know you can access this page over here that I'm looking at at the moment with all of the code and it has code annotations. Um, it, there'll be a link at the end of the video that you can click on, okay? And, and then you can you can access this page and go through the, this in a lot more detail. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. Let's talk about collinearity, all right? And this is basically, if there is a strong correlation between your predictive variables, you may have a problem. And we mean a strong correlation. A weak correlation isn't anything to get upset about, uh, necessarily. I mean, you look at a number of things, but generally we wouldn't get out of bed for a correlation of more than 0.7, correlation coefficient, and uh, more than 0.8 we would be concerned. And we'd look at this quite carefully and potentially remove one of the variables. There are a couple of strategies you can employ um, to deal with severe collinearity if you have it. And, and I'm not gonna deal with that in this video. What we wanna do in this video is identify whether or not there is a problem. And in this particular data set, I can tell you that there isn't a problem, so hooray. But let's have a look at how we got there. Right, firstly, what is collinearity? So if two variables, if two of your predictive variables are very highly correlated, it may mean that baked within them, there is overlapping information and that uh, it confounds, it, it basically befuddles our understanding of the relationship between those variables and the outcome variable. Okay, the best way of framing it is what I've got on the screen at the moment. Uh, collinearity it makes it difficult for a model to figure out uh, the individual impact of each variable on the outcome because they're essentially explaining away the same variance. Let's, let me give you an example. Uh, body mass index, which is made up of you know weight, height, and weight are two often two separate variables that will be very highly correlated. Um, if we use both variables in our model, um, there is overlapping information. Uh, and so the actual effect of one or the other on the outcome variable will be very unclear. So we don't want these highly correlated variables. Um, sometimes there are correlated variables. There might be an element of correlation, especially when there is confounding. And you do want to include confounding variables in your model so that they can be controlled for. So that is why you know, there's an art and a science to this. We really need to kind of think about the data, look at the study design, understand your variables, understand the nature of their theoretical relationship with each other and with the uh, outcome variable as you make decisions about what to include and what not to include. Right, in this particular data set, this is what we did. We created this little matrix over here and there's the code. I'm not gonna go through this code in detail right now because it's not really the point of the lesson, but you've got access to it and all of the little annotations. So, you know, get that if you would like to. But by creating this little matrix here, I can look at each variable and the correlation coefficient for each other, all the other variables. And it's a bit of a heat map as well. Uh, the dark blue is a perfect correlation and that's always where the variable is mapped out against itself. Clearly, there's nothing in this matrix with a correlation coefficient of more than of seven point of 0.7 or above. So we're not worried about any of these relationships. Here I've got the same sort of thing and this is just color coded with a scale on the side. I prefer the numbers because here I can look at the numbers and say definitively none of these are anything that I would be worried about. Now, the other thing I would just tell you about dealing with about the correlation and collinearity is this. Looking at, this is a good start. So looking at the correlation coefficient between pairs of variables is a good indication that there's nothing too serious to worry about. Once we've built the entire model, there is always a chance that uh, over and above just pairs of variables, but 
uh, multiple variables get entangled in a way that's very difficult to see in terms of multicollinearity. And when we look at checking the assumptions, there is a statistical test that you can do to make sure that against a range of predictive values, um, that, that collinearity is not, or multicollinearity is not a problem. We're not gonna talk about that in this video. That's gonna be in the video that is to come on checking your assumptions. Um, but my point is that even once you've done this check, it might look like everything's fine, double thumbs up, where to go. In fact, the A problem may still emerge when you do the checking for assumptions when the model is created. So, you know, kind of watch this space. This isn't the end of our conversation on collinearity, but at least you understand the concept. Now, if you'd like to be able to access this page that you're looking at right now, there'll be a link on the screen. You can click on that um, and you can uh, access this page and all of the code, copy and paste the code, look at the annotations, replicate what I'm doing at home and it's the best way to learn. Nice to see you. Don't ever change, don't do drugs. Always do your best. Take care. Speak to you soon. Bye.